the old devil comes in like a yes. roaring lion. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, sometimes you got to just let the devil know where you stand there. Praise God. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 11. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord, tonight for what you've already done tonight. That precious soul, Father, Lord, and Lord, all the saving, Lord, all the testimonies, God. Lord, we just thank you for everything, the healing, Father, what you've done in this service tonight. Now, Father, we pray, God, that you'll continue to touch. Lord, we ask for the anointing upon every heart, every mind, every ear, Lord. And Lord, I ask for the anointing upon me tonight, Lord. But I can't preach without the preacher. Lord, I pray for the preacher that will preach tonight. And Father, we just say, God, that you just bless this service. Lord, bless those that hear the word tonight. Lord, bless those who are not here tonight. God, you understand. You know the reason why, Father. We pray now, God, that you just minister to, a, to every, each and every one in a special way, Father. And God, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. There comes a time, now this is what I'm going to be preaching on tonight. There's a come, there comes a time. You have to hold your ground. That means you've got to maintain your position. There comes a time you have to hold your ground. And I tell you, sometimes that's not easy. That's right. Amen. And the one thing about it, when the devil comes in like a storm, amen, God will raise up a standard. I'll tell you that right now. But I was uh, thinking about, amen, what, the, what this message was. And I, I just did your prayer this evening, and the Lord just laid this on my heart, and we need to understand, amen, what the devil tries to do. Amen. It says now in verse 11, and after him was Shemai, the son of Abi the Hadarite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, for, for it was a piece of ground full of little, which is called the pea pads, and every year Every time that, uh, if you read the whole chapter, you understand that the, the Philistines came and, and took, the, took the, 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 the things away from the, the children of Israel. And uh, finally, they got this one guy. Amen. And I tell you, if, if, if you let the devil, just like the Philistines here, if you let the devil take over, he'll take over. Amen. Amen. If you, if you let the devil take your joy and your peace and take things away from you, it's not God's fault. It's your fault. Amen. Amen. I said it's your fault, not God's fault. Amen. Because God has already given us the victory. Praise God. But sometimes what we've got to do, we've got to make a stand. And, and I tell you, church, sometimes God just does that to let you know that he's always there. He's the one that gives you strength. He's the one that gives you the power. He's the one that wins your battle. Amen. But until you make your stand, until you make up your mind, you're not you're tired of the devil. Like that song says, I'm going to take back what the devil has stole from me. Amen. I thank God for that. So the Bible tells us, in verse 12, but the but the it says that but he stood this time. He got tired of the Philistines, just like we need to get tired of the devil Amen. when the devil comes in to try to take what we've got. Amen. And I tell you, I'm, I'm tired of amen, the devil taking things away from you, away from the people, and away from me. He'll take your joy. He'll take your peace. He'll take everything that you've got until he destroys you. Amen. amen. Church, we don't have to do that. Hey, I said, we don't have to do that because the devil, he give, Jesus said, I give you power over the devil. Yes. I give you power over the principalities and powers. Yes. I give you power over all of your enemies. And church, me tell you, like Brother James preached was this morning, the devil is after us. He, he wants us back. Amen. But church, we don't have to go back because I've been there. Amen. You've been there. And I'm not going back, amen, to life that I used to live because i got too many good things, amen, going on in my life. Praise amen. God. And I'm looking, amen, towards heaven. And I just got to be back at song and say, i got to just keep on praying. I just got to keep on going. I just got to make up my mind. Glory to God, I'm going to go all the way. 
this, this man had been made up his mind. He said, I'm going to make a stand. And I'm going to stand against that old enemy. Praise God. And you watch us when he made his stand. Guess what? God was there all the time. Yes. I said God was there all the time. But God couldn't do nothing because he allowed that enemy to do what he was doing. And church, that's the way God is today. You know, he has to stand back sometimes and let the devil just run over you until you make up your mind. I'm not going to run no more. I said, I'm not going to, I'm going to make my stand, Lord God. And the Bible says that the enemy will come in like a roaring lion. But he said, resist him, amen, stuff, fast in the faith. He stood by faith, he knew he wasn't going to win this war, praise God. It might have cost his life. He said, this time I'm going to make my stand. And church, when he made his stand, amen, God came up on the sea and gave him victory. Amen. God will give you victory tonight if you'll make your stand. Amen. I'll give a word of hand to that church. Yes. First of all, I said, but he stood. This time he was making up his mind to stand in the midst of the crowd. He defended it and slew, he would say, the Philistine. He said, the Philistines. I mean, church, God said we have power of the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness and anything that comes at us, we'll just make a stand, glory to God, and said, I'm going to stand for Jesus. And Amen. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight, praise God. We need to make a stand. And church, we tell you, we're living in a world right now. See, my people, Brother Jake, is ashamed of Jesus. Amen. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you lost your joy, you need to go back to Jesus. Yes. If you lost your peace, amen, you need to go back to Jesus. Yes. If you're not happy where you're at, just go back to yes. Jesus. Yes. And let me tell you something, the old devil will try to discourage you. The world will try to discourage you. And church, there will be times that they'll look at you and think that you're peculiar. That you're foolish because you made up your mind that you're going to serve Jesus. It doesn't make no difference what they say or what they do. They may talk about you. Oh, you missed me. Somebody shout for the night. Somebody needs to the night. you got to make a stand. Yes. Amen. Especially for Jesus. He's your sole resource tonight. He's everything to you tonight. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us spirit of fear. See, there was a spirit of fear upon this man. Yes. But you know what, church? He must have got a hold of something. Look in the second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, But God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. You make your step against the enemy. God will give you power. If you've got Jesus in your life, yes. God will give you power, and he'll take the fear away from you. But, church, you've got to have faith in Jesus. He's your answer, Lord, to God. Yes. And, church, if you get in trouble, you've got to go back to Jesus. I said, you got to go back to Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, he, and he gives us a, and a love and a sound mind. I like that part. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. But the Bible tells us, he said, that, uh, he said, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. I tell you, church, if you get ashamed, amen, you done, you done lost it to the devil. Amen. And church, I know we live in a world that thinks that, 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 that we're procured, that they think that, the, amen, that they're, they're more nuts and everything else, that we're bought to make fun of and everything else. But church, let me tell you, we are going to get the last laugh. Amen. Yes. I said we're going to get the last laugh. Hallelujah. So we don't have to worry about that. Glory to God. But the Bible tells us, it says to be thou not partakers. Let's go back. Be, verse 8, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Nor uh, uh, be that his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Now, church, we taste the devil will try to afflict us. Yes. He'll try to cause people to talk about us. Amen. He'll cause people to make fun of us. And trust me, tell you, I've seen, I, I've heard of people losing their job because they stood for Jesus. Yes. And trust me, tell you something, if you lose your job or whatever happened, Jesus will, amen, return everything right back to you. Amen. You'll not lose anything when you come to Jesus. I said, if you take up for Jesus, he'll give you something better. I said, yes. this is what I'm saying. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid of the, the Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And church, the devil can't do nothing about it. Praise God. And I can say, if you do lose something, the devil, the Jesus will give you back to you. Come on, folks. I'll give him on the head. Clap for that. <laughs> be thou not partakers of the fiction of the God according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us, amen, with a holy calling. 
We are God's children tonight, church. Now, see, this, this man in the pea pads, he had to recognize, even though he had fear, because church, time after time, it would have, would have, was a season time before the beans of it, or the peas to be the, the, the pigs and everything. They know exactly what time to come. See, the devil knows exactly what time to come, and you need to be able to be aware of it and, let it, and stand against the end, because church, he will come in like a roaring lion, but you've got to be steadfast in the faith, Lord, yeah. resisting the devil. And here they come every time at the end of the season. Here they, the prison would come in, and, and they would take all the peas and everything, and leaving them to starve and everything else. But church, let me tell you, this one man, See, it just takes one person in the church to make Amen. a stand. It takes one person to stand in the family. It just takes one person to make a stand. And then what you work at, it takes one man, just one man brought victory to yes. Israel because he was willing to stand up and didn't have to sacrifice his life for a little old pea patch. Probably didn't mean nothing to the devil, but it meant to his life. Amen yes. to this man. Amen. I'll uh, give him a hand clap, church. We'll go back to 2 Samuel 23, it says, verse 12, but he stood his ground, glory to God. Right in the midst of the ground, he defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord, yes. the Lord will take your side. Mm -hmm. The Lord will fight your battle. The Lord will stand with you. Yes. But you've got to make up your mind that first of all, you've got to make a stand. Like I said, that God can't do nothing until you make your mind up. Amen. You're going to be stuck fast and you're not going to move. And you will say, God, it's, it's either me or the devil. And church, I'm here to God will move against the enemy for Amen. Yes. Oh, glory to God. That's the way that we've got to make a stand. Where I used to work at, now we wouldn't allow to talk about Jesus. Amen. We, we've been such a pair talking about Jesus to ourselves. But uh, you talk, you, you're not allowed to witness. I wasn't allowed to witness about Jesus. Like I didn't know no better. <laughs> Amen. And, and they would watch me. They had respect for me no matter what. Way. But let me tell you something. They know when you make a stand. They know who I stood. They knew who I served. Amen. They knew, praise God, that I had, not it wasn't me, but I had God in my life. Amen. I had victory in my life. I was anointed of God. And when they was in trouble, amen, they would come to me and say, would you pray for me? Yes. And one time the lady come in and said, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. Well, there was my boss. And I said, there was my boss. I had to make a stand. But let me tell you something. I made a stand. Yes. And that gave me, amen, that gave me the anointing. Amen, that gave me the power, amen, to say, I'm going to make a stand. If it cost me my job, yes. I'm still going to do it because she asked for me to pray right. for her. And I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. And I pray for her, glory to God. And just things begin to happen. Yes. I'll give a lot of hand clap, church. Yes. Glory, you got to make a stand. Yes. Just I tell you, if we don't start making a stand, the world is taking over the churches. Yes. And church, it's time for the church to make a stand yes. and let them know the church does. And yes. the world is not going to take over the church. But we are, woo, yes. we are going to take over the world, yes. praise yes. God. Yes. He told us to go out into the world, amen, the byways and the highways, and yes. preach the name of Jesus yes. and lift up the name of Jesus yes. and make your stand, glory to God, and God will be here to move. Oh, glory to God. I say, God, yeah. we begin to lose it. It's time that we take the pea pants back. Yes. It's time we take the church back. Yeah, it's time right. we take the world back. Glory to yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. It's time, amen, to make the stand. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul had to, Paul had to go into Rome. But the Rome was an ungodly place. Right. Amen. That this was a fearless nation. And Paul went in and said, Church, he wasn't afraid. Right. Amen. He has a backbone. We don't have any backbone anymore. I said, We don't want to make a stand for Jesus, Amen. and we don't want to make a stand for the gospel. Amen. I said, We don't want to make a stand. Church, the world needs the gospel. Yes. I said, The neighbor needs the gospel. Yes. Individual needs the gospel, and we must make a stand, amen, for the word of God, amen. because the word of God is a light to our feet and to our path, and the, the word of God 
is what, what the world needs, church, because it lets us know what we live and what we need and where our power is. Yes. And Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right in the Roman places. I mean, the Romans were ungodly. They were cruel. Amen. The damn was cruel, church. Amen. And he's trying to make you, amen, be afraid or be ashamed, amen, to talk about the gospel. I'll talk about Jesus any place I amen. can if I get a chance. Thank you. Thank you don't want to ask me about the word of God. You don't want to ask me about Jesus, but I'll sure tell you. Now, I don't know a bit so much about it. But Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why ain't the world been saved? Why ain't the church is being filled? Because there's 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 shame to lift up Jesus amen. and there's shame of the gospel. Church, the gospel calls, amen. The world will be, to be turned around. The church, we gotta be able to, to, to preach the gospel, amen. teach the gospel, tell the gospel. Because amen. that's the answer. Yes. Paul recognized that. Paul didn't go into where where where, where there's a uh, you know, there's, there's no problem with everything. He went right in where the enemy was at. Right, right into the enemy camp. Amen. So he went right into the enemy camp. He knew that God called him to the priests of the Gentiles and the Romans were the Gentiles. Right. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. That means black or white, Little or old or young, whatever it may be, if they can just hear the gospel, understand the gospel, it's for everybody. Amen. Not just for minority, it's for everybody. Amen. Well, maybe the doctor don't want to hear the gospel. <laughs> maybe the big wheels don't want to hear the gospel. Anytime you get a chance, you got to go open up, take it. Amen. Amen. For well, it's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews and also to the Greek. That means the Gentile. Paul had a vision. Paul had a burden. Have you, have you, do you listen to your burdens? I believe in church that, that we were so far away from Jesus sometimes and, and far away from the anointing of God that you don't even have a burden. See, if you don't have a burden for the lost, right. if you don't have a burden for somebody, praise God, amen, there's something wrong with us. Can I hear that? You need to have a burden for our nation. Yes. You need to have a burden for our church. You need to have a, a, a burden for the world. Are you missing what? Because the world needs uh, Jesus. I said the world needs Jesus. Yes. The church needs Jesus. The church needs the gospel. The world needs the gospel. And church, we shouldn't be ashamed to proclaim it and say God is the answer. Amen. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 119, verse 104, it says, Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Amen. If you want to stir the old preacher up or the pastor of the church, I tell you, church, the church should have enough knowledge and enough wisdom, amen, to understand false ways. Amen. Amen. It's not, it's not God's way. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. I don't care if the homosexual comes in, amen, sit down in their seat, amen. don't have no problem with them. Amen. Because I'll preach the gospel to them. Amen. Or you miss what I'm saying. Or those that the, the, the Order their babies or whatever. They need Jesus. Yes, and they need to be told about Jesus. Amen. I don't care how bad a sinner that person is. And that they're, they're welcome in this church. Amen. amen. Why well, I can preach to them. And church me tell you where you can uh, love them. And let them know, praise God, that, that Jesus is the answer. And you got you got the answer just the same way they can get the answer. Yes. Amen. But you've got to hate the false ways. You can't go along with things. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Right. Yeah. And sometimes if you have to tell them it's wrong, they may not like it sometimes, but you know what the truth will set you free. And that's what the church needs to do. That's what the, we need to tell the world. The truth will set you free, and that's what you've got to have. You've got to tell them the Word says, amen, that if you come to Him and believe in Him, amen, and sorry for your sins, He will save you and deliver you. Amen. 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 Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You can't go wrong, church. 
if you didn't stay in God's Word. First of all, you've got to have Jesus, and you've got to have the Word. Now, if you'll notice, see, I preached one time putting your ducks in an order. First of all, you've got to have Jesus. And the second thing you've got to have, you've got to have the Word. You notice that Jesus gave the three and a half years, Jesus gave the disciples the Word. Yes. I said that Jesus gave the disciples the Word. Are you getting, are you getting some understanding now? So church, first of all, we've got to get the Word in us for the Holy Ghost, which I'm about to talk about now. See, we've got to have the Holy Ghost. The church don't have it. Amen. I said the church don't have it. I'm talking about being filled up with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And, and I believe that most of the churches are ashamed of the Holy Ghost. Right. It's a Him. It's a person. And you Amen. better not be ashamed of that person. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, church. Amen. You say, Brother Matt, you're still harping again. I'm not a harping. I'm preaching the gospel. Amen. This ain't a pet pee, amen. It is the gospel. And trust me, tell you something. The church needs to get hungry. Yes. And the church needs, amen, to recognize that they need to have the power. Because you've got to put your ducks in order. You've got to have Jesus. You've got to have the Word. And you've got to have the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and anoint you. And put some fire in you. Amen. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He need that Hallelujah. That's a, that means the anointing. Yes. I don't like dried up preaching. I don't like dried up training. I don't like dried up teaching. I like something that's on fire. Yes. I like something to feel the anointing go forth. And church, the church don't have it. No wonder the church is not filled. That's right. Unless you give them sugar. Amen. Amen. You're catered to them. Thank God for the small church because we tell you something. First thing is. A lot of pastors couldn't, uh, uh, they couldn't uh, pastor a small church. Right. Amen. You know why? Because they got to ignore you. Mm -hmm. Because, see, everyone is not perfect. Mm -hmm. And, see, when you're a pastor, I'll say, know your sheep. Uh, amen. And sometimes you have to preach on your sheep. Not all of them, but to them. Right. I don't preach all of them. I preach to them. Amen. amen. For the Holy Ghost, and they may need to straighten them or whatever. Right. And church, the, the, the big churches, they don't care what, how you live or right. anything else. And they just want their crowd. And they're preaching just a little sermon that's the sugar-coated word to just to get you in there. And they don't care a bit about your soul or nothing. I care about your soul. Amen. I want you to go to heaven. And I want you to be a man ready for this. So I've got to preach the Holy Ghost, amen. Right. The Holy Ghost will convict. I said the Holy Ghost will convict you. Yes. He'll counsel with you. He'll, he'll let you know where you stand with God. Right. Amen. And church, we need to get back. And he'll give you a witness. Yes. To, amen. To testify about Jesus. You'll be bold in the Word. And you'll be bold in the Spirit. And you'll be bold in the Gospel. And you'll be not ashamed of Jesus. And you'll not be ashamed of the Gospel. Amen. And you won't be ashamed of it. Oh. Amen. oh, I love Jesus. <laughs> I love Jesus. Oh, he's so good. Will you worship the Lord tonight? <laughs> Will you worship the Lord tonight? Yeah, don't be, don't be. Lift up my hands up and say, Jesus, I worship you. Yeah. I love you. I praise you. You, you saved yes, my Lord. soul and put me on the way to heaven. Yes. And you put me on the road of highway. Yes. Yes. Holy, I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, if I do this thing every day, I'm walking with Jesus. I'm talking with Jesus. I'm running with Jesus. I'm running with Jesus. I'm talking with Jesus. I'm talking with Jesus. I'm talking with Jesus. I'm talking with Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I just love your son. One time you love with your church. Look about them, I about them, talk about them outside the church. But the small church, Billy Graham come from a small church. Jimmy Swagger come from a small church. A lot of these big time gospel preachers, they come from a little church. Amen. Amen. But the small churches, you know where everybody lives at. Right. You know where they're coming, you're going. You know where their ups and downs are at. It's hard to pastor a small church if you really love the people. Because you got to be long-suffering. Paul told him to preach the word. 
reprove, rebuke, and exhort yes. with yes. all long suffering. Right. Paul knew what it meant to, small, to pastor a small church. Thank God for the small church. I'm Amen. asking. Amen. I'd like for this church to be filled. Yes. That still be a small church. Yeah. I couldn't handle a big church. Get too old and feeble. And let the Holy Ghost come upon me. Right. And the Holy Ghost come upon me. I yeah. can dance with the best of them. Yeah. I can preach with the best of them. Yeah. Oh, you listen to what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. me after church. Yeah. But that's okay. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I've got some power under me. I'm not your man. I got some far stuff in my bones, and I got to let it go. I said, I got my mature mouth. I got the power in me, praise God, and I got to let it go. I got to preach about Jesus. I got to tell about the God. I'm not ashamed, glory to God, because it's the power of God, and so souls will be changed. The world will be changed. Amen. It's the voice of the gospel. Paul said, be filled. With the Holy Ghost, be filled with the Spirit. Amen. That's what he means. <clears throat> but the trouble is, the church moved uptown. Right. See, when you rely upon Jesus, the gospel, and the Holy Spirit, see, it'll rely upon the money. See, the Bible said the church we're living now, the God's church, they were a rich church. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were rich. The Bible said they were rich. Miserable, yep. poor, blind, and naked. Right. Amen. I got, and I asked some more to it. I'm not adding to the word. I said, not only they rich, rich and miserable, poor, blind, and naked, they have no strength, they have no power, and they have no anointing. Yeah. The, the whole church is dead. Right. They have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus in the church, you don't have a church. Yeah. You just have a building and that full of people. It's like being baptized with a, as a sinner. You're going down as a sinner, and you're coming up as a sinner. You're going to church for the house of church. You come in as a sinner, and you... Hey. Oh, Lord, help me to the sinner. And you go out as a sinner. Amen. 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 Oh, God. God wanted this preach tonight. <laughs> I got that last 15 minutes. Thank God for the computers and the Bible. But see, the Holy Spirit led that. He wanted them to hear and you to hear. Amen. It's time to get serious. Right. I said, Jesus is about to come, and the devil taking your pea patch away from you. Mm -hmm. When you compromise to the devil, and you compromise the devil if you don't go all the way with God. That's right. Put your ducks in order. I should have bought them ducks. I didn't have time. Jesus, amen, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, amen. and the anointing, mm -hmm. and the fire. And the crowd. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Somebody say amen or something. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. But Paul told the, the church, Amen. I'm, I'm somewhere here. In Ephesians. <laughs> be filled with the Spirit. Yes. I'm so happy. <laughs> glory to God, I felt like this a long time. Amen. I tell you, I've been working hard for the last four days. Yes. I ain't worked like that since I was 20 years old. <laughs> Went to bed like this. Got up like this. But I ain't like this now. <laughs> well, when the Holy Ghost gets told you, He can heal your body. Amen. Now, I might be dead after the church, but I'm feeling good now. Amen. Amen. But Paul says, in the book of Acts, in the upper coast there, they were some disciples. Like some of us, like some of you. He said, Have you been filled or baptized in the Holy Ghost? Said you believe. Said you believe. It said you got saved. Right. One thing about it, you'll not be able to blame me for it. Amen. I said, You'll not be able to blame for me for not blasting it, not blasting it, not blasting it. Amen. I'll tell you the good news. Amen. You can take it for what it's worth. Right. Paul says in Acts chapter 19, verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost? And they know the difference. And they knew, amen. First of all, you got saved and baptized in the body of Christ. Right. That's the first baptism, like Brother Tony said. Then, if you, can, if you want to, you go down and get baptized in the creed. Yep. That's good. 
fact, I got a couple of baptisms now. <coughs> and I'm going to, when I baptize the brother James, I want to hold him down at least five or ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure they get full. Amen. There was one preacher who said, boy, me and Sister Michael, we broke the ice. We got baptized. And it was cold. I don't care what you say, it was cold. Amen. They dug this, this, dug this young man up. I guess just what did I say? Pulled him up out of that water. He said, are you cold? He said, no, I don't feel nothing. Don't come again because he just lied. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I do it is, have you been baptized since you believe in the yeah. Holy Ghost? Amen. Now, you can go to heaven without the baptism of water. You can go to heaven without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it sure will make it rough for you. Amen. And a lot of people don't make it. And the devil knows it. You need to everything put up with the full armor on. That's putting the full armor on. That's right. Bible said, pray in the spirit. Amen. See, yes. when you got the Holy Ghost, you can pray about the body of yes, in the Holy Ghost. And Bible said in the book of Jude, pray in the Holy Ghost to be your most holy faith. Yes. So you got you got two vantage points there. And why people that don't want it, they're ashamed of it. But you got to make sure it's there for your ground. Yes. This man stood his ground and said, I will get everything. He's not taking nothing away from me. Don't let the devil take nothing Amen. from me. Amen. Jesus is the word of the Holy Ghost. You don't let the devil take none of it. Amen. It's yours. And we make it so hard. They made it hard on me when I first got saved. I smoked. I had to quit smoking. I lost my temper. I mean, I was trying to everything to work. Be a holy, holy, holy. Good. Duh, duh, duh. You can't do that unless you got the Holy Ghost, but He's the one that's going to help you. That's right. And you can't live like the devil, have sin in your life and everything else, and think to have the Holy Ghost. But if you're striving and doing your best to, amen, to, to live for God and say, Jesus, see, you don't have no faith. I'm trying to say it in a gentle way. How many, how many God saved my faith? You are saved through faith, not your acceptance against the God. And you accepted that. What did you, how did you accept that? You accepted it because God said you'd be saved. Well, the Holy Ghost is a gift also. You can't buy it. You can't work it out. Of, you just say, Lord, fill me with and And, and the, now the Bible says they tarry. Now, and that was one of the worst. God, we think the Bible was the first God saved everything. You don't tarry anymore for the baptism right. of the Holy Spirit. Ghost. Because they were turned because they'd never been set down. Amen. But they was waiting for it. We're waiting for. We've got it, church. We got it. We've got it. Bring it out. And it's, it's just a, it's a word or something that just it's inside. Just just we praise God, worship God, believe God, and say God fill me. Fill and we got a we got a Baptist back there. Yes. I, it was a Baptist back there, <laughs> and she was up there. She come. Did you come to get filled with the Holy Ghost? Whatever. Anyway, she was just praying, worshiping God. And I, and I got I had to take a double take in the system. Like, Here's your blah, 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 talking in tongues. I said, praise God. Another Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> but by faith, you can't be ashamed of it. You can't be afraid of it. You just got to believe. I'm trying to hurt this. I've got that Lord, and I can't stop. But you got to have, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe. Yeah. That's what it says. He said unto him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, no, you can't blame me. You can't blame me. We have not so much as heard yeah. whether they're being in Holy Ghost. You heard it. You heard it. If there are two men, you heard it. Get rid of your pride. Don't be ashamed of them. Amen. Amen. Just say, Lord, I want what you got. Amen. I want what you got, Jesus. I ain't going to be able to finish all this. But you've got to make a stand. Amen. Amen. Be able to worship you. Why I can't understand, and for, for the life of me, you go down to the ball game mm -hmm. or a, some kind of big game, a event, and if they shoot that big ball or they knock that ball, I've been there, I know how they act. Beer yeah. flying all over the place and everything else, jumping up and hollering. Yeah. That's my man, that's yeah. my man. Johnny Bench is my man. That's a long time ago, too. Yeah. Come to church, sit there like a knot on a log. <laughs> we need to learn to worship, praise Him, right. and like that lady, like the lady said, 
If you're ashamed to praise Him and worship Him, get you a glass of water. Yeah. Amen. Right. Just look at it. Amen. And just say, Lord, I love you. I praise you. And pretty soon you're going to drop that glass and you just shout and everything else. Yeah. Because you got your mind on just, uh, off of everything else. Right. You just got to. I remember we went to church. Yeah. Just to make her tell you that. And there was one certain lady sitting by four seats back. And everybody was watching. Mm -hmm. Boy, the service is going good, Brother James. Boy, they were singing, boy, they lifted their voice and everything, and they was waiting. And I told them, just, 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 just about the time everything got good, she began to shout, yeah. jump up and down, run up the aisle, and the whole church, yeah. they was waiting on the her to do, the, do that, when they should have been waiting on God and the Holy yeah. Spirit, and praise God, let somebody else lead. Amen. I'll give them a little hand. Right. <laughs> If you, wait, if you have to wait on somebody, you're, you've got a problem. Right. Right. I'll say that again. If you have to wait on somebody, you have not a problem. Right. Amen. Amen. So we need to serve the Lord with gladness. Not to serve the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100, verse 2 through 5. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he that the Lord that the Lord is good. When you know that the Lord is good, he's not going to give you nothing. That's not good for you. Right. Amen. Well, that Holy Ghost is of the devil. No, the Holy Ghost will help you worship. Amen. Woo Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is good. It is He that hath made us and not ourselves. We are His people. We're His people. He's going to take care of us. And the sheep of His pasture. It is the days with thanksgiving. Praise God. I don't know the church tonight. I didn't go to church this morning. Just the same old preaching, same old singing, same old this and same old that. Well, because we got the same old person. Hello? Same old person coming to church, the same attitude. See, you're not by yourself because most of them do that. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Hello? I said, hello? Hello? Give the Lord a hand clap. Break up. Give the. We're going to come in with Thanksgiving. Ooh, glory. I wish I had that fair way. I don't like doing the big church preachers. They probably run me off. <laughs> Amen. That guy's nuts. Enter into his gates with Thanksgiving and to his courts with the praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Amen. In closing tonight, I'm going to cut it short. Well, I think about running out of time. How many minutes I got? Uh oh. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 3 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. His for there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Amen. We are stand for that crown of righteousness. Don't let the devil take your crown of righteousness. Let's stay tonight. Thank you.